The Korean War of 1950 to 1953 is very often forgotten here in the UK and, and probably elsewhere too. It's sort of, you know, stuck between World War II and Vietnam and, and all the films that seem to, to concentrate on those two wars and, and Korea is forgotten. But it was a, a crucial moment in world history where the Cold War became a hot war and also where the UN successfully came to the defence of a member nation under attack. It was a war that cost somewhere between two and three million lives and where more British servicemen died than in any other conflict since World War II. And it saw one of the most heroic last stands ever conducted by the British Army. And there have been a few, which deserves to be told. And so, this is the story of the last stand of the glorious Gloucesters at the Battle of the Imjin River in April 1951. Since the beginning of the 20th century, Korea had been occupied by the Japanese Empire uh, and upon Japan's defeat at the end of World War II, Korea was divided into two uh, zones by the United States and the Soviet Union, each installing a sort of regime allied to them in their respective zones. The two superpowers withdrew from the peninsula, leaving their, their client regimes facing each other in an increasingly uneasy peace. And on the 25th of June 1950, the communists in North Korea launched an all-out attack on their southern neighbour, swiftly occupying the southern capital, Seoul, and driving South Korean forces all the way back to Busan on the very tip of the Korean peninsula. South Korea appealed to the United Nations for assistance, and 23 countries came to their aid. The United States supplied the largest contingents of troops, but there were also sizable contingents coming from uh, as countries as diverse as Canada, Australia, South Africa, Ethiopia, the Philippines, and included in that UN army was the British 29th Brigade, consisting of 4,500 men. The British contribution would ultimately reach 60,000 by the end of the war. The UN Army supported the South Koreans in stabilising that line around Busan and in September 1950 a, they launched a seaborne counter-offensive at Incheon. This counter-attack soon became a, a rout as the North Koreans were pushed across back across their border and then all the way back through North Korea until the UN forces were in sight of the Chinese border on the Yellow River. And it was at this stage that the communist Chinese, for a variety of reasons, came to North Korea's support. Now, facing an overwhelming numeric might of the People's Liberation Army, it was the UN and South Koreans' turn to go on the defensive, as they were now pushed all the way back again, losing control of Seoul once more. And this was the situation that met the British 29th Brigade when they landed in Korea in December 1950. Despite the UN once more wresting control of the South Korean capital in early 1951, the initiative still seemed to be very much with the Chinese and they prepared for a spring offensive to conquer the Korean peninsula once and for all. The two armies were divided by the mighty Imjin River and it was this to this demarcation line that the British 29th Brigade were positioned, defending the, the southern bank in front of a village called uh, Sol Marie. Uh, commanding, which sort of commanded the road down to Seoul once more. The British force, commanded by uh, Brigadier Brodie, consisted of the Royal Northumberland Fusiliers, the Royal Ulster Rifles, the 8th uh, King's Royal Irish Hussars, and the 1st Battalion of the Gloucestershire Regiment, who we're going to hear a lot more about in a little while. They were supported by a C Squadron of the 7th Tank Regiment, uh, the 45th uh, Field Regiment Royal Artillery with their 25-pounder guns, and a 170 mortar uh, battery of the, Royal, uh, of, of the Royal Artillery as well. For operational purposes, they were joined by a 900-strong unit from the Belgian Army as well. The men of the 29th Brigade, the British Brigade, were a mixed bag of regular soldiers, recalled regular reservists, um, um, men from other regiments who had volunteered for active service in Korea, so-called Korean volunteers, and indeed national service conscripts. The Gloucestershire Regiment, for instance, was made up of, well, according to the, the soldiers of the Gloucestershire Museum, 34% uh, regulars, 43% uh, regular reservists, many of whom were veterans of World War II, 14% national uh, service, and 9% Korean volunteers.
Despite this uh, mixture of backgrounds and experiences, they were to acquit themselves with the utmost valour, as we're going to find out in a moment. On the 22nd of April 1951, the Chinese launched their spring offensive. The objective was once more the cap capture of Seoul and then the elimination of uh, UN forces in Korea. 300,000 Chinese troops attacked on a 40-mile wide front. Brody's 29th Brigade was holding a 12-mile front on the Imjin River alongside the US 3rd Infantry Division and they faced three whole divisions of the Chinese 63rd Army, about 27,000 men against Brodie's 4,000. The brunt of that Chinese attack fell on the 800 men of the Gloucestershire Regiment, who were to face attacks of nearly 10,000 Chinese troops over the coming three days. In this sector, the spring uh, offensive began with waves of Chinese troops wading across the wide Imjin River. They were faced by a small patrol from A Company, Gloucestershire Regiment, who laid down a heavy fire with their trusted Bren guns. Uh, and despite inflicting serious casualties, the enemy just kept advancing. Uh, and by 11.30 that morning, the patrol had run out of ammunition and had to withdraw. And now the Chinese could cross the river unopposed and their offensive really got, got underway. To the east of the Gloucestershires, the Northumberland Fusiliers were now also coming under sustained attack and the, and the Belgians were fighting a desperate retreat from their position, which had been on the north side of the river, exposed. They were coming back in front of the Chinese. As the British fell back, the guns of the 45th Field Regiment opened up, giving them valuable covering fire as they retreated. And the darkness that night allowed the Chinese to just swarm across the river engine and mass against the 29th Brigade. By 3 a.m. on the 23rd of April, a company of the Gloucesters on a ridge called Castle Hill were under extreme attack, as were D Company to their right. An hour later, B Company, which was to the right of D Company, were also engaged and outnumbered something like 25 to 1. The Gloucesters were forced to use their Bren guns to, just to defend their positions from being overrun. Just before dawn, on the 23rd of April, A Company were finally driven off that hilltop position, the Castle Hill, by determined Chinese attacks. But even then, the Gloucesters refused to lie down and they actually launched a determined bid to retake Castle Hill against those over overwhelming numbers. And it was during this, uh, this ultimately unsuccessful counterattack that uh, Lieutenant Curtis was killed leading an attack on a bunker for which he was to be awarded a posthumous Victoria Cross. As the day wore on, D Company were forced to withdraw from their positions and as night fell, it was the turn of B and C Companies to face the brunt of the Chinese attack. B Company of the 1st Battalion Gloucestershire Regiment were down to one officer and 20 men. On the 24th of April, the commander of the Gloucesters, the 45-year-old Cornish-born Lieutenant Colonel James Kahn, was ordered to concentrate the remnants of his regiment on a steep rugged feature, Hill 235. And there he was ordered by General Sewell of the US 3rd Division to hold his ground, come what may. It was General Sewell who was party to one of the great, great miscommunications of the war. When he asked Brigadier Brodie, commander of the 29th Brigade, how things were at the outbreak of the battle, the British officer in classic British understatement replied, things were a bit sticky. The American commander assumed that that meant things were sort of under control, you know, a bit, bit hot, but OK. Little did he realise that he was being given a very British coded, you know, basically it's about to hit the fan. Um, and maybe if Brodie had been slightly more fruity with his language, Sewell might have made some different tactical decisions. It was Churchill who famously said that the, the British and the Americans are separated by a common language. The determined British stand had surprised the Chinese, but the British were rapidly becoming victims of their own success. The massive superiority in Chinese numbers now meant that the Chinese were able to start simply bypassing the British positions and starting to infiltrate the rear. And this in turn started to put pressure on the UN flanks on either side of the 29th Brigade, and the UN forces needed to fall back to more defendable positions. And so now the British 29th Brigade was in serious danger of being cut off. This potential uh, situation became very real on the 24th of April as two relief columns trying to reinforce the British front line came under sustained attack before they even could reach the British and were forced to retire, uh, having got to within 2,000 yards 
off the Gloucester's position. They just could not break through because of all those Chinese that had swarmed around the Gloucester's regiment uh, positions. Khan and the Gloucester's were now on their own. Outnumbered 25 to 1, with ammunition, food and medical supplies fast running out. And now at least five miles from any friendly faces. In the early hours of the 25th of April, the Chinese launched a ferocious attack on those remaining British positions, in particular Hill 235, being held by the Gloucesters. And as that long night continued, the Chinese coordinated their attacks using bugle calls. So just imagine, on this dark night, on this hillside in Korea, we've got the mayhem of the firing. We've got uh, the Chinese battle cries trying to actually psych out the British defenders. We have these bugle calls, these eerie bugle calls, um, which almost felt like something out of the Napoleonic Wars or something. And then we had a, a slightly surreal moment where the Gloucester's own bugler, Drum Major Bus, started to play his bugle, both to confuse the Chinese and also to show that continued British resilience, and he played the Long River Valley through that night on that hill in Korea. Lieutenant Colonel Khan personally led two counterattacks on the Chinese lines using his rifle and grenades. Finally, at 9am, a US Air Force strike stopped the communist attacks, and Lieutenant Colonel Khan received a wireless message from his commander, Brigadier Brody, informing him that his mission had been completed, and now it was time to get out. Unfortunately, the UN lines were now seven miles to the rear of the British units, and in between them were thousands of Chinese soldiers. What now transpired was a brutal, frightening rush to safety. The Northumberland Fusiliers and the Ulster Rifles fell back through an opening being held gallantly by the Belgian uh, troops, and the Chinese swept forward. Veteran uh, Tommy Clough later recalled looking at the surrounding hills and being reminded of ants swarming out of a nest. There were so many Chinese troops. Suicidal Chinese soldiers threw themselves in front of tanks carrying British survivors to safety. Johnny Dyer of the Royal Ulster Rifles recalls seeing at the afterwards when they got to safety the tank truck tracks covered in blood with limbs of Chinese soldiers poking out of bits of wheel and stuff. But for the most forward British unit, the Gloucesters on Hill 235, it was too late. Out of food and ammunition, they were given the order, every man for himself. And in small groups, they sought a safe passage home. Less than 70 of them made it to safety. Of the 750 men of the Gloucesters on, at the Battle of the Imjin River, 59 were killed and over 520 were taken prisoner by the Chinese, held in horrific POW camps in North Korea, where they were subject to, amongst other things, re-education programs. And it was in that captivity that a further 34 of the men of the Gloucestershire Regiment were to die. Amongst those who were prisoners of war was Lieutenant Colonel Khan. He was held in solitary confinement for eight long months, and during that time he used a nail to carve a Celtic cross, a five-inch Celtic cross, out of some volcanic ro rock that he'd found in the camp. Despite that sad story of the British prisoners, the forces, the British forces at the Battle of Imjin River, and in particular the heroism of the men of the Gloucestershire Regiment, prevented the planned Chinese breakthrough. Whilst the British suffered over a thousand casualties, dead, wounded, and, and captured, and total Allied losses were something like 11,000, it's estimated the Chinese suffered over 70,000 casualties in the Battle of the Imjin River. And it's also estimated that something like 10,000 of those were inflicted by the Gloucesters. That defence fatally blunted the Chinese offensive, and the last stand of the Gloucesters, as well as the actions of the rest of the 29th Brigade, enabled the UN Army to fall back and secure a defendable line, which then held against the continued Chinese attack and prevented the fall of Seoul. In fact, the Chinese were never to attempt such an ambitious uh, offensive again during the Korean War. The Battle of the Imjin River remains the bloodiest single action fought by the British Army since World War II. The Glorious Gloucesters, as they became known, were awarded the US Presidential Unit Citation. At the ceremony to, uh, to present the award, the commander of the UN forces, the American General Van Fleet, uh, described their actions at the Battle of Imjin River like this. He said they were the most outstanding example of unit bravery in modern war. And the US presidential citation itself reads, 
Without thought of defeat or surrender, this heroic force de demonstrated superb battlefield courage and discipline. The 1st Battalion Gloucestershire Regiment displayed such gallantry, determination and spirit de corps in accomplishing their mission as to set them apart and above other units participating in the same battle. The Queen gave the Gloucesters special permission to wear this American honour on their uniforms. In 1994, the Gloucestershire Regiment were amalgamated into the Royal Gloucester, Berkshire and Wiltshire Regiment. And in 2007, that regiment itself was reorganised into the Rifles. Lieutenant Colonel James Kahn was released from his two-year captivity in September 1953 and was awarded the Victoria Cross for his gallantry at the Battle of Imjin River. He died in 1986. In 2015, he was actually featured on a South Korean postage stamp marking the 65th anniversary of the war. And of course, it's a war that's never technically ceased. In 1953, an armistice was finally agreed between the two warring sides, establishing a ceasefire line along the, the 38th parallel north. The two sides have conducted an uneasy truce ever since. The Korean War cost the lives of over 3 million people, 162,000 South Korean military, we often forget that, 36,000 US military uh, and another 4,500 military from other nations that participated in the war on the UN side. It's estimated that something like 700,000 Chinese and North Korean soldiers died in that three-year conflict and anywhere between 2 and 3 million civilians perished on the Korean Peninsula. The war, sandwiched in between World War II and Vietnam, has, as I said earlier, been largely forgotten. Even in Britain, you know, apart from World War II, it's later conflicts like the Falklands and more recently Iraq and Afghanistan that have sort of pushed the Korean conflict aside. And yet, over 60,000 British servicemen saw action in this war. 1,100 of them were killed. 2,600 were wounded. More casualties in the British Army than any other war involving British troops since World War II. But at the end of it all, the UN helped establish a prosperous democracy that is now South Korea. The small stone cross, painstakingly carved by Lieutenant Colonel Khan whilst in captivity, is now on display in Gloucester Cathedral, where the men who did not return from this battle are also remembered in a stained glass window. And far away, on a hillside in South Korea, just south of the Imjin River, stands another memorial to the men of the glorious Gloucesters, at the base of Hill 235, which is now called Gloucester Hill. Thank you. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video then please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my, new, of my new releases. Maybe even support me with some crowdfunding. Links to both are appearing, well, about now. They're also in the description below. Once again, thanks for joining me and until next time, take care and I look forward to seeing you very soon.